Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Night Call. Huh, so wait a second. Then I just want to watch what the... Re- oh, okay, we could read the newspaper. That would take up some time. One in the morning. So how much time does it take to get... When I spend some time there? The police archives look like any other building in Paris. No sign, nothing to make it stand out, but this is where all the case files and criminal records are stored. You know the the place well. For several months, you spend a lot of time with the woman who directs it. Oh. She was a regular passenger, calling upon you almost every night. First as a driver, and then... You can see her shape from across the street. You try to prevent your brain from going there, but it has a mind of its own. She's as beautiful as ever. Oh. You get out of the cab. You cross over to the sidewalk onto the other side. I'm not gonna lie, I was surprised by your request. She lights a cigarette. She still has that cold, distant look about her. But you know, it's just a facade. You don't smoke anymore? You light a cigarette. (laughs) That first waft of nicotine and gas from the lighter, heaven. She runs a hand through her hair. Her wedding band shines under the street lamp. You're freezing. Listen, I'm sure you know I'm not allowed to give you this kind of information. But if what you said was true, then... You get the the impression she's reaching for your side. Um, what? Wait, you're a married woman. Don't seduce me. You have any information for me? Yes, sorry, uh, of course. I fished around and the first three victims were not part of the data leak. Shit. Shit indeed. That means that information about Besson, Bougrain and the Argentinian one? Gorodische. Yes, that's it. Gorodische. It all came from someone who had access to their criminal records. That help? You nod, bits of ash from your cigarette sprinkle onto your pants. You attempt a smile. Yes, it's better than nothing. A moment of silence. Helene takes a drag of her cigarette like there's no tomorrow. She paces a bit to warm herself up. You... you should come over sometime. What do you think? You grin. You and Helene used to sleep together when things with her husband weren't so good. (gasps) Oh no! She was married back then too? Oh no, no, no. Sounds good. Let me just finish all this. Yes, of course. Give me a call when all this is over. She looks deep into your eyes. You look down. Her hands are shaking. One last smile and she puts her cigarette out. You do the same. I've got to run. Need a taxi? No, thank you. You're welcome. It's the least I can do. She reaches out to you affectionately, then stops. You decide to cross the street to put some distance between you as quickly as possible. When you get to your cab, you hear her say something. She's yelling from across the street. Also, you should stop smoking. It's bad for your health. You wave. She goes back into the archives. You get into your cab and rub your hands together. Time to get back to your shift. Okay, so that took half an hour, too. Okay, so I am kind of inclined to read the newspaper, so maybe we would find out something about that, too. Although I don't know what the media really knows so much more than the police would. Hmm, okay, so who's close by? I mean, we... I don't know who she or he is, so, but let's just go there. Oh, and then we need to... Chauré, Prévert. Prévert. Montparnasse, please. Okay, well then I hope our tank can handle this. You pull up to a local police station to pick up your next passenger. Ooh. She comes out from under an archway, visibly frightened. She slips into the back seat of the cab and gives you her address, near Montparnasse. 
You glance at her in the rearview mirror and notice how she's dressed. Everything all right, ma'am? You start the cab. Your passenger eyes you intently, reluctant to speak. Yes. You can barely hear her. She points to the car radio. C could I listen to the radio? You nod yes. Which station? My wallet was stolen. She pauses and fixes her eyes on you. You freeze. I have money for the fare. Okay. The passenger senses your surprise. I just wanted to tell you I could pay. She looks down. What kind of music? Excuse me? The radio. What kind of music should I put on? Rock? The woman shakes her head. Uh, no. Could you turn to 89.4? You hold down the button until you get the station. On 89.4 there's nothing but static. Are you sure that... A hint of a smile plays across her mouth. Faint, but a smile even so. She waits a second or two before answering. Can you hear it? You lean forward slightly, closer to the radio. Behind the sounds of electric sputtering, there is something else, a shifting sound. It sounds like... Waves? The passenger looks up. That's right, there are waves in the background. Her voice is almost inaudible. It's perfectly natural, sir. Her sir gives you quite a start. It's the frequency that causes it. It vibrates, is constantly dancing about, pulled by all the incredible forces surrounding us. Most people listen to music, to the news. As for me, when I work, I like to listen to isolated frequencies, like these. They're broadcast, but no one hears them. The proof that we exist. She smiles at you. You're getting close to the passenger's address now. And what do you do for a living? Math. She seems mesmerized by the sound of the wavelengths. Um, what kind of math? Algebra first. Linear algebra. And now harmonic analysis, spectral theory. A funny smile plays across her face. But you know how it is, changing all the time. You nod very slowly. The client suddenly straightens up and points to the radio. It's beautiful, so incredibly beautiful. Listen. You listen. You only hear a static at first. And then? Little by little, like a distant figure, the music takes shape and slips softly into your ears. Beautiful, isn't it? To me, they were ghosts, and that's why I studied science and later mathematics. I wanted to know why. You pull over. She gets the fare ready while you slowly turn up the radio. Beneath the layer of interference, someone is speaking. Like the voice of a child. Thank you. Y you emerge from your trance and take the fare. Your passenger exits the cab and walks away without another word. You sit there, immersed in the sound of the radio a while longer. It has a soothing effect on you. You start the engine and drive away. Okay, new money. Hmm. Who's next? I think I need to go to the gas station first. Three businessmen in impeccable suits are coming out of the nightclub. Okay, yeah, fill the tank. Just a little bit, though. 
Okay, let's let's go with that. What is there? What else is there? Do oh, we can enter the shop. What's in there? You walk into the mini mart. There's a smell coming off the guy running the shop at the station. Booze. Yes. Okay, we can buy some newspapers. Oh, and a lottery ticket. So maybe we could. That's the way to get money. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so I think those are just. Those are all. A lottery tickets and these is just a newspaper. Or we can just can just talk with him. Although I don't really know what to talk with him about. Maybe later. Maybe another time. Good night, I guess. You're not an exit the shop. I think the interface here is very cool. You get into your taxi and drive away. I hope I paid. Okay, so now let's see who we're going to drive. What the hell? Is this Santa Claus? Santa, is it you? Two joggers are on the right-hand sidewalk. You never understood the point of running, especially not in the dead of winter. It's really Santa Claus. What? Well, I mean, of course we're going to drive him. Where are your reindeers, dude? Your next passenger smells like beer. Oh no, it's a drunk Santa. <laughs> no, it's even worse. It's like every single fiber of his Santa suit has been soaking in a keg. Ew. Come on, dash away. <laughs> his breath is 96% brandy. Oh no. <laughs> that could get funny. Your eyes are starting to sting. <laughs> A park somewhere near the Champs Elysees on shit. The name of the street is. His head is spinning and he does his best to hang onto the door. Impasse. Uh. It will come back to me. Go ahead, drive. You start driving and silently wonder how to ask your passenger if he has enough money to cover fare. You glance back at your passenger. He's mumbling to himself, but you can't quite make out what he's saying. Christmas is over, so why is he still dressed up? Uh, what's this suit for? <laughs> he turns to look at you, wide-eyed. Suit? Well, yeah, the Santa suit. Silence. More silence. Is he so drunk he doesn't realize he's still wearing a costume? There's no costume, kid. <laughs> this is what I wear to work, just just like you, you know. He pointed his clothes. You don't dress like that in real life, do you now? He stares at you and bursts out laughing. I'm messing with you, kid. He lowers his voice. He's confiding in you. After working my ass off all year long, I like to hit my favorite pubs. Get monumentally wasted. <laughs> He guffaws. Here, in Paris, there's a bunch of bistros perfect for just such an occasion. No one talks to you and they have white wine so dry it eats away at the inside of your mouth. So many different types of brandy. Pear brandy, cognac. He closes his eyes in delight. And sometimes I order just one eeny weeny beer. To cleanse the palate. He's almost whispering. Okay, it's usually not one of them fancy microbrews there. He jumps. Oops, don't tell anyone, okay? Just imagine if people found out Santa Claus thought the beer here tasted like piss. He laughs a sparkling laugh. When he stops, it's just to throw out noncommittally. Anyway, you can't say anything anymore. Honestly, with all the trouble I go to, people should just leave me the fuck alone. All those fair-weather activists, they still want their little snot-nosed miracles to get the latest stupid toy. <laughs> oh hey, speaking of snot-nosed kids... What is it with this manure pile of a new generation? <laughs> 50 years back, you could give a kid a book and he'd go on about it his whole life, all starry-eyed. 
But today's little whiners, what an eyesore. Fucking hell. They want to have it all, but they don't like anything. They all have GSMs when they're eight. Those things cost a whole month's wages. How can you possibly make them happy after that? How? He's staring at you, waiting for you to answer. No idea. He raises his hand. At least, you're honest enough to say you don't know. I appreciate your honesty. He closes his eyes, like he's taking a moment's rest. You want me to tell you what they really want? What kids these days want are machine guns and dolls whose hair you can fix. He seems to have calmed down for a second, but it was just an illusion. Speaking of which, both girls and boys like those dolls whose hair you can fix. He twitches his moustache in silence. Back when I still made toys for kids, I can tell you they couldn't care less about them. Couldn't give a damn. They just wanted to have fun, play, laugh and forget that their parents were losers. He leans over to you, rife with anger. Fuck, that's the real problem. I'm telling you, parents are losers. Idiots. Putting kids into this world? Those guys haven't got a clue. Am I right or am I right? I mean, have you seen the state of the ice cap these days? Have you, huh? Because there's not much of it left. He pauses. Now, I can't say it's all bad. I don't have as many polar bears coming into my yard. <laughs> Damn nasty beast, vicious, mean. I'm not sad to be rid of him. He heaves a long sigh through his beard. Before, things were different. Tears from at the corners of his eyes. Shit, I can't talk about the past without crying like a little girl. He throws you a sideways glance. No need to stare. You don't even have time to react and he starts back into his rant. I remember you, you know. To tell the truth, I remember everyone, every single person. You, you were an angry one. So terribly angry. And your letters, your handwriting, holy fuck, where they hell to decipher. <laughs> Don't worry though, the elves handle all that for me. <laughs> you could hear a hint of disgust in his voice when he brought up the elves. Otherwise, I wouldn't have time to do nothing. Yeah, you were just furious. It's like someone punched you in the stomach. <laughs> Santa doesn't like me. Your brother was giving you hell. Someone wrenching your gut. Man, what an... He suddenly thinks of something and stops talking. His gaze wanders outside. Yeah, anyway, let's talk about something else. <laughs> How do you know all that? <laughs> you still don't get who I am? You stare at him in the rearview mirror. Look, kid, I'm not gonna spell it out for you. And something tells me you'd rather avoid the subject. A little something called jail. <laughs> Whoa! Another punch to the stomach. So there's your Christmas present. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> wow, Santa's badass. <laughs> he smiles, opens his eyes wide. Wait, I think we're almost there. Slow it down a bit, kid. He searches outside for... What are we looking for? We're looking for my sleigh, kid. <laughs> what else? He looks at you with pity. It shouldn't be hard to spot. There's a sleigh and a couple half dozen reindeer. <laughs> he heaves a funny sigh. I'm sure it's like in an alleyway somewhere. Oh, oh right over there. Turn right. You obey and go up a street you were on a few seconds before. <laughs> oh, I hope he pays. A few meters down, your passenger stifles a yelp. Oh shit, I was right, it was right here. And drive around the block. You turn again and back your passenger is mumbling. I'm gonna have to get one of those thingamajigs, GPSs to help me find my sleigh more easily. You eventually pull over in an alley, no light, a few empty office buildings and some trash cans that haven't been empties for days. Kid, sorry about before. I didn't mean, you know, to bring up any sore points. 
He pays his fare. Oh, thanks, Santa. Watch your back, kid. Yay, Santa paid his taxi fare. He gets out and slams the door. Bye, Santa. He slips on the wet sidewalk, <laughs> grabs onto a street lamp with a heavy and awkward step. He clumps along the alley. Uh, I want to stay. I want to see where his sleigh is. <laughs> you sit for a moment, watching him. At the end of the alleyway, he starts rummaging through a pile of boxes, pushes a trash can on wheels aside, and disappears. I want to stay a bit longer. A few minutes go by and... nothing. You turn the key and start driving again. <laughs> you open the window for a second, hoping to get rid of the alcohol fumes. Something tells you they'll stick around for a while. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess we have time for one more drive. Ooh, so much. Or we could go home straight away. On the other hand, we could go home straight away. I mean, we do have a lot to investigate. We have two files to read once more. And they would take up like all our time, so maybe we get more time if we go home straight away. I mean, we did make a lot of money today, so... Or is there anyone else interesting here? I don't know. I can't tell. Or is this... I can't remember, I always think that this is RV. Is it him? I don't know. Yes, it is! <sighs> but he's not gonna pay, is he? And at the moment, he's not, like, my prime suspect. <sighs> On the other hand, he kind of is, too, so let's, let's, let's accept it. Do you have time? Do you have money this time? The door opens. It's RV. He greets you with his bizarre verbal tick, as usual. How's it going, Owen? Hi, RV. You start the engine. You look in the rearview mirror and you realize that the homeless man is clutching his left side. Well, all right, already, Freddy. Is everything all right? He gives you a vague answer. Yeah, sure, fine. A pause. He can't help making a face. Insist. You're really not looking that great. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got in a little fight last night with this guy. But that's all taken care of now. All taken care of. Oh no, did you kill him? He smiles, revealing a row of bad teeth. Uh, what kind of... Who was the guy? He doesn't seem to understand. Why, you know a lot of bums in cliché. Before you can answer. All you need to know is he took something that belonged to me and he paid the price. He closes his eyes a moment. So yeah, he wasn't all that bad. But if you let someone steal your stuff, you're done for. Sure. You have to show him you're tough, that you're a big shot. He pulls a sour smile. Sometime later, your passenger clears his throat. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have to have a little something to drink, would you? You know, like they do in those newfangled caps these days. Chauffeur-driven cars. Yeah, that's right, right? I don't have anything, sorry. <laughs> he nods. I don't mean water, you know. You smile. I realize that. Ah. He sighs. Usually you're not such a pain. I'm worried. He opens his mouth to say something, then stops short. Yeah, I know, man. Sorry. He gives you a black look. Questions, you know. I've got those morning, noon, and night. I'm sick and tired of them. He loses himself in thought. As you drive along, you see him struggling to keep his eyes open. They are more often shut than open now. Say enough. Turn up the heat. Aww. So he falls asleep? Okay. Your passenger's head jerks back up. 
Oh, maybe not. Ah, uh, you're really a good guy, you know, yo. Aww. Your passenger gives you a sleepy smile. Hey. Serious? You don't mind if I get a little shut-eye on the way, do you? You nod. Enjoy. He gives you a smile, but it's still a painful grimace. Next thing you know, he's sound asleep. You continue to drive in silence, soothed by the warm air of the car heater. Hey, not that we fall asleep, huh? You pull up in front of a nondescript grey building. Your passenger immediately wakes up and looks around. Shit, this is great, I'm first! Where are we? An organization that hands out clothes for winter. I heard they were going to open a new... A pause. He's searching for the right word. A new shop, you could say. And I'm the first one, huh? When does it open up? Two days from now. <laughs> your eyes widen. Your passenger gives a little laugh. Don't worry. I have planned to keep me busy. He pats his pants pockets. I found some books. One on yoga. Then a book by that old handsome dude. You know, the guy who talks on the radio. It will help pass the time. He gives you a tap on the shoulder. He reaches for the door and stops short, overcome with a spasm of pain. Fuck. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, worry. I'm taking him to the hospital. I kind of want to know because, I don't know, he's one of our suspects and also he's in pain. Taking you to the hospital. No, no, I'm good, good. He opens the door and climbs gingerly out. And uh, thanks for turning up the heat. That was nice, nice. Next thing you know, he's disappeared down a dark side street. You sigh and start the cab. God damn it, RV. When will you ever pay me? Ah. Yay, I know more about my clients. I have met Christophe. And I confessed I have met Hussein oh okay oh that's my real name then or maybe not the judge okay I've met Denis that was the farmer guy I've met Santa! I'm so happy! He... No, he wasn't really who I expected. You found out how LV got his scar. I did? Okay, from fighting. Okay, he had a black eye. Well then, we did it. It was night three of driving. It was a long night, I feel. I don't know how long this episode will be, but it felt long. So, we are going to do the investigating and putting stuff back together stuff. Oh, we're going to get new clues, too. Oh, well, how are we going to analyze all of those? But we're definitely going to do that in the next episode. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.